Joining us on DBL is award-winning journalist Ramin Satuta. His debut book, Ladies Who Punch, the explosive inside story of The View, is out in bookstores now. Ramin, this book is juicy. And given that we here at DBL are also a panel talk show, it hits a little close to home. Just saying. Uh, did you expect your book would receive this much attention while writing it? Thank you so much for having me. You know, I've been covering The View for 50, uh, 10 years as an entertainment journalist, and of all the topics I've ever written about, there seems to be a lot of interest on, in The View. Um, and I think it cause it's because it touches on a lot of different sections in our society. It's women in Hollywood, it's Hollywood in politics, it's daytime TV. Um, and I started to see it a few years ago as a book because I thought that there was an interesting saga of what was happening behind the scenes of the show. Smart. So is that why that you chose The View over other talk shows? Have you considered covering the talk or any other talk shows? I don't think other talk shows have had the cultural influence that The View has. Certainly no, no other talk show that's currently on TV has had the, had the impact the caliber of hosts, everyone from Barbara Walters, who started the show in 1997, to Meredith Vieira, who launched her career and became an anchor on the Today Show, to Rosie O'Donnell, who you know is one of the most successful women in daytime television, to Whoopi Goldberg and EGOT. There were just really compelling characters on the show, and that's another reason why I saw it as a book. It makes perfect sense. So speaking of Rosie O'Donnell, we have to talk about the infamous Rosie O'Donnell and Elizabeth Hasselbeck fight. Viewers will remember this was in 2007 over the invasion of Iraq. It ended up being Rosie's last day on The View until her return in 2014. So Ramin, what was going on behind the scenes after that fight? It was a very difficult period for the show because Rosie and Elizabeth started out as friends. And then Rosie, Elizabeth felt like Rosie was trying to produce her and trying to instruct her on how to be on TV. And she started to resent that. And so their friendship slowly started to pull apart. And they um, were very tense backstage. They weren't talking that week. There were guests that I talked to that were on the show that said between the commercials, they were making eye contact with each other. Wow. And then they have a fight. It's about the war in Iraq, but it's also about their friendship and betrayal and whether or not they've been loyal to each other. And um, Rosie and Elizabeth have to separate during that commercial break. And Rosie leaves the show and tells her publicist that she wants to leave The View forever and she doesn't ever want to go back. Yikes. So it was the buildup. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, speaking of Elizabeth, there is that very viral leaked audio right now, the audio recording saying she wants to, Elizabeth wants to quit following her fight with Barbara Walters over the morning after pill. How did Barbara respond? That's actually a scene in my book. That's chapter 10 and how the first section of the book ends. Barbara was flustered and confused as to why Elizabeth wanted to quit. And she was insistent that Elizabeth has to come back because that was also a period of great um, instability for the show. Meredith Vieira had left to go anchor today. Star Jones had been fired. This is the summer hiatus before Rosie comes in. And it's really Barbara and Joy and Elizabeth. So if she loses another co-host, it would have been catastrophic for the show. And poor Lisa Loeb was the guest co-host that day, as we see in the video and leaked audio, and she had no idea what to do right. or think. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh, that's fascinating. Uh, are there any parts in your book that you have not been asked about? In other words, is there something really juicy that people seem to be glossing over? Tell us, please, please, please. So one thing that I found really interesting was that there was a period on the show where Whoopi Goldberg didn't feel like she was being respected by ABC and she was preparing to leave The View. And one idea that she had was to do a live action sister act musical on ABC, kind of like Sound of Music Live and these other sort of live musicals that networks do. And the network completely passed on it. They weren't interested at all. She thought maybe she could have a, you know, a supporting role. She wouldn't play the star, but she'd have a supporting role. And ABC passed on the idea of having sister act in prime time, which I think is kind of a bummer because I would have really liked to have seen that. I would have too. I'm surprised. What a miss. Wow. Can you imagine that live? Yes. Like, Big missed opportunity. I would have loved that. You and I both. You I, and I both. We could have done a viewing party and everything. It would have been fantastic. <laughs> uh, finally, Barbara Walters, the woman responsible for all of this. Exactly how much power, Ramin, did Barbara wield on that show? Barbara had pretty much absolute power on the show. She, she started the show in 1997. It was her idea. She was an executive producer. She owned half of the stake of the show. She liked to stay on TV that often when co-hosts were fired, it wasn't really her decision, it was a network's decision, but Barbara was the one pulling the trigger. She was the one 
you know, deciding who could stay, who should go. And it was part of it was a survivalistic instinct because she really wanted the show to succeed. So when, for example, Debbie Matt Novels wasn't working, Barbara was okay with firing Debbie because she really, it was important for her to succeed over being sentimental. It makes sense. That's her baby. Uh, she's being a businesswoman. Uh, and there's... TV is a tough business. Yeah, You can't exactly. really let emotions and feelings get in the way. So when Star Jones was testing negatively, it was time to let her go. There you go. Wow. Uh, there is a Daily Mail article published just yesterday saying friends of Barbara are accusing you and your book of ruining her legacy. What is your response to that? I don't think that this book in any way, you know, tarnishes Barbara Walters' legacy. Her legacy has been cemented. She's a groundbreaking journalist. She changed television. She allowed for women to cover news, to enter war zones. And I think this book, in a lot of ways, is a celebration of Barbara Walters. But I wanted to do an honest portrait of who she you know, is and was on The View. And so there were things about her, like everyone, that weren't perfect. And I wanted to you know, show the multidimensional world of Barbara. Yeah, I, I would actually argue, Ramin, I agree with you. I would argue that this book and her legacy with The View has completely uh, reinvented her. I see Barbara as the woman that reinvented television. I see her as a boss lady. I see her as a businesswoman. And I think your book celebrates all of that. Uh, before we go, we want your pers your perspective on the Meghan McCain and Joy Behar fight going viral right now. And I know that your book predates Meghan on The View, but can you provide any insight onto what may be happening behind the scenes with the other hosts and Megan right now? I think that the thing about The View that always makes it very successful and relevant is that it mirrors Thanksgiving dinner. And sometimes you have family members that don't politically agree and it gets heated and it gets a little too heated. Barbara didn't like when it got too heated. She wanted everyone to be, you know, friends and then it would go to a commercial and everyone would be fine and i think every once in a while it crosses the line and we saw that this week but megan talked to me in the book about how her respect for joy and they're politically opposite but they you know been friends on the show and i think you know the show's doing really well right now it's the best ratings it's had in five years and i think the big reason why is that megan is the first republican that the show's had since elizabeth hasselback true republican that actually debates the other women yeah and i think it's important to have both sides and uh to respect each other's opinion so ramin satuda thank you for joining us here on dbl his book ladies who punch available now in bookstores and online i, I gotta tell you you gotta get this book it is so good thank you again ramin thank have you very much for having me i appreciate it have a fantastic day you too thanks